Hi, my name is Alyssa Decker, and for my report, I will be speaking about Noah Webster. Noah Webster was born in 1758 on October 16th. He came from a large family with modest means. Although he was from a limited background, it is estimated that he started school at around seven years old. His parents were able to send him to Yale at the age of 16, and it is there where he stayed and studied until he graduated at age 20. It was after gaining his formal education and lack of financial resources that he decided to not go any farther in personal education. Initially, he aspired of going into law, but he became a teacher instead. Ten days after his 31st birthday, he married Rebecca Greenleaf on October 26, 1789. Together, they had eight children and numerous grandchildren. By 1785, he had been the teacher of a small one-room school, had written his famous work, A Grammatical Institute of the English Language, which would later be known as Just Blue Backspeller, a grammar book, and an, ac an accompanying reader book. After making so many vital contributions to the benefit and future of America, Noah Webster died and was buried in 1843 in New Haven, Connecticut. <clears throat> One of Webster's first major contributions to society was that he revised the King James Version of the Bible and made his own edition, which he called the Common Sense. He said that, in my view, the Christian religion is the most important and one of the first things in which all children under a free government ought to be instructed. No truth is more evident to my mind than that the Christian nation must be the basis of any government intended to secure the rights and privileges of a free people. However, a strong reason he had for creating this provision was to make it easier to understand and more appropriate for the common person. He translated the Bible because he thought it was dirty, and he felt that a woman couldn't read it without blushing. Noah Webster was a pilgrim in the founding of the future of America and the American educational system. What could be considered his most notable contribution to society was his self-named dictionary, which he completed at age 70. It was a compilation of over 65,000 words used in the American language. He used the principle of uniformity to justify his alterations, arguing that words that were alike, such as nouns and their derivatives, should be spelled alike. His goal was to homogenize the American English language. This was to make sure that all spelling across the nation was the same. Webster believed that English spelling rules were unnecessarily complex, so his dictionary introduced American English spellings. This meant that he would change specific words to have the subtle differences from the British spelling which we still have today. In his dictionary, Webster used American spellings like color instead of the English color with a U, and music instead of the English spelling music with a K at the end. He also added American words that weren't in the English dictionaries like skunk and squash. Webster made these changes partially due to the fact that in every different region, ranging from large to small, People spoke and spelled ever so slightly different, and he also feared that these spelling and pronunciation differences would lead to political differences. He truly felt that we would be more unified as a nation if we all spoke and wrote the same. <clears throat> it was Webster who created and defined the differentiation between the American English and European English. His contributions to the American society virtually changed our country. His goal was that every child in America should be acquainted with his own country. He should read books that furnish him with the ideas that will be useful to him in life and practice. As soon as he opens his lips, he should rehearse the history of his own country. By creating an American Bible and setting up standards for our speech and spelling, he did just that. I feel I can say with confidence that if Noah Webster hadn't taken the time to so painstakingly go over a considerable amount of the words that we use in our speech, then our nation would not be the same. He revolutionized how we talk, how we spell, and, in essence, how we communicate. I would agree that we are more unified as a nation in our speech. Having a common language amongst those who live in America truly binds us together. I also think that globally we would not be the same. <clears throat> because of who we are as a nation, and how critical we were and are in the revolution of the world, American English could be considered the business language for the world. By having a language that binds the people together, we are also more respectable as a nation. Noah's, Noah Webster's dedication to his nation and country and hard work had, had and continues to have major repercussions. Personally, I think that what Webster did was a major stepping stone for the American nation to become what it is today. We all have a basis on which we can communicate, and we are, 
we are a more powerful country because of it. We can only speculate in and how the world would have turned out if Webster had not have made this remarkable, remarkable contribution to the betterment of society. His personal desire for knowledge branched out for the benefit and advancement of those who are privileged to gain their education here. He has a legacy that continues to live on today in classes and in homes throughout the whole nation. His works have an everlasting mark on the country.